Hello everyone and welcome back to the introduction to calculus. You may be thinking, okay, we're going to have a first topic, but nope, we're going to have a history first. I'm sorry if I include this because the history behind it is actually interesting for me, in my own opinion. Okay, so it's up to you if you're going to disregard this one. Okay, but uh, in this video, we're not only going we're not only going to talk about the history, but uh, we will be all discussing the definition of calculus and what to expect in learning calculus. Okay, so you can skip this one. But if you want to, to listen, no problem, because this is just a brief history of the two well-known inventors who invented calculus. Okay? Although there were some professors, or sorry, philosophers, mathematicians, or scientists who had formulated an idea, theory, or topic that is actually part of calculus, but at that time, they did not know what calculus is. Okay? But because of these two, they invented calculus. All right? So let's begin. These two inventors are Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. All right? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, because my pronunciation here might be wrong, so please correct me. So let's start first with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton, he was born at 25th of December 1642 and died at 20th of March 1726 or 1727. There's a conflict here in his death year. Because uh, there is a uh, change of calendar system at that time. Because at that time, they were using old calendar system. And during this period, they're going to convert it into new calendar system. All right? He was born in England, so you can say that he's an English guy. According to the source, he was the first to apply calculus to general physics. And he published Method of Fluxions, which is the earliest written formulation of modern calculus, completed in 1671 and published in 1736. This fluxion is a term for derivative, in which we will discuss that in the future. Okay? Because this is one of the topics in calculus. So, so next, we're going to talk about Gottfried Leibniz. His full name was Gottfried von Leibniz. Correct me if the way how I pronounce it is wrong. Okay. Anyways, he was born on the 1st of June 6 and died at 14th of November 1716. <clears throat> so he was born in, you can say, German guy. According, he developed much of the need in calculus today. He published Novena Methodus Prom Maximis et Minimis. I put a double quotation. I forgot that. Nova Methodus Prom Maximis et Minimis. In English, it's a new method for, uh, for maxima and minimum. So you're going to find the maximum and minimum of anything. All right. So here, the notation in calculus is from Leibniz, that his contribution is much more influential than Newton's station. And plus, his work is to modern, modern calculus uh, because of that notation. What is this? Are they having anything? Are they even is that which of these public uh, publications will be uh, credited for, uh, uh, discovery of calculus or something? Well, to answer the question, they are not in a competition, nor that they are partners in crime inventing calculus. So, what I'm trying to point that, they invented calculus by themselves. Okay? So, it start first with Isaac Newton. He is actually the first one who invented calculus. He is... No, 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 wait. wait. Uh, yeah, in terms of inventing... Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, for him, he was sitting on the apple tree and the apple fell down. There, he began to question that if everything falls down, why moon not fall down? So, he made his own math to further get his answer to explain that phenomenon that he is wondering about, uh, he was wondering about, which was 
the moon. Okay? So, with that, he well, he uh, invented calculus first. But, you see, Gottfried, he also invented his own calculus. Okay? Which is this one. Nova Methodus Pro Maximis et Minimis. But, you know, because of that, there were a moment where Isaac Newton and God what debate that which of these two should be credited and which one was a suspect of according to the source there was a heated debate of which mathematician and hence which nation give credit when Newton and Leibniz initially announced their findings okay because again it was Newton who first invented Kilusa, not a topic about calculus. No, it but Leibniz has their own uh what do you call this one finding I mean, has its own Leibniz Nova Methodus Pro Maximis et Minimis before Newton published that if you Newton, if you invent calculus first, then you should publish it earlier. Newton, Newton did. He actually derived it first. Which me i think you know before leibniz but no leibniz did it anyway and you know due to this uh yeah leibniz thought that okay uh what he calls one yeah he published his work first before newton so he claimed that no but leibniz is unpublished notes because at that time okay Leibniz has a point, okay? If he or Newton, I mean, if and he thought that least ah sorry, Newton was a suspect, but no, Newton in the is because he was, it doesn't imply that Newton was a plagiarist. I see, sir, is well, your topic that is very similar to Newton's. In fact, Newton provided with uh, with a select of Royal Society members. Basically, uh, he even shared. I mean, Newton. I'm talking about Newton here. Okay, Newton shared his work to the Royal Society members, and yeah, because of that, there's actually an international debate. You know, from European. English speaking, but what happens? Well, you know, Leibniz and Newton arrive for the conclusions independent. Leibniz integration, difference for Newton. Okay, so that explains that these two are not plagiarizing each other because uh, Leibniz started with integration while Newton started with the differentiation. You get me? So with that being said, they conclude that it was not plagiarized by Newton nor by Leibniz, but rather they discovered the idea of calculus by themselves. So to conclude, calculus. It was Leibniz who named this subject, okay? Who it was Leibniz who named calculus. Before uh, Newton described his uh, calculus as the science of functions, okay, science of derivatives. It was used until the 19th century, but now after that, it's already named as calculus. So for Leibniz, uh, it took until 1815 for the first comprehensive treatment of calculus to be published in English using the Leibniz notation, and because of this, Leibniz people believe that. It's much more impactful 
you know, compared to Newton's because of this notation. Plus, it's actually relevant to the modern calculus. All right? <clears throat> so, now, bottom line, what is calculus? You know, like, yeah, we know calculus is such a degree, but from the video up to here, combining the history and the background, what is calculus? Well, according to Mathis Fun, it's about changes. In the Google, I search it, according to Oxford Languages, it mentioned, it stated that it is the branch of mathematics that deals with the finding and properties of derivatives and integrals of functions by methods originally based on the summation of infinitesimal differences. The two main types are differential calculus and integral calculus, which are actually one of the topics we will discuss in the future. Okay, and another one, according to Bijus or Bijus or Bijas or Bijas, I'm not sure with the pronunciation, so please correct me. According to him or to it, it deals with the continuous change, also known as the infinitesimal calculus or the calculus of infinitesimals. And here is to understand how functions change. This so those rate of changes or something, that is part of calculus. But this this one question called infinitesimal. So here's the thing. Calculus was derived from a word. Uh wait, wait, no, no, no. Wait, I'm wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh calculus is actually meant in uh, in I, I do believe if it's in Roman, Greek, or Latin, please correct me. But based on my research, sorry, I, I forgot it. It's actually small pebble. Or, sorry, pebble. Oh my God, small pebble. Okay? Imagine this one. You see, you have uh, small pebbles here. Okay? Small pebbles here. You have that a lot. Okay? Now, here's the thing. That small pebble represents differential calculus. And... The combination of all pebbles represents integral calculus. Why is a small pebble represents differential calculus? Because here in this small pebble, it represents how does it differ from other pebbles? How does this uh, pebble change compared to the other pebbles? Okay, let me give you an example. Vase. Uh, is Let's just say it is a vase, okay, a flower vase. You know, in the ancient times, before calculus was, was invented, they are curious of what volume would this, would this be? Or would, would yeah, actually, yeah, it's correct. So you know what they did? They actually broke this down into pieces, you know, from this. Just imagine that these are the large pieces of vase. Then it became smaller, then it became smaller, 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 smaller. You see, these smaller, smaller shapes, you know, they use that to actually form it into a geometric shape. You know, they use this one to form a geometric shape. It could be a circle, it could be a triangle, it could be a square. And then similar to the other pebbles, they're going to find what shape is that, that very, very tiny shape. And that tiny shape should be as much as possible uh, a geometric shape. It could be triangle, rectangle, you know, those regular shapes, you get me? So that they can find the area or the volume of these uh, small shapes. Then if you're going to add them together, that will be the volume of the vase. And that's it. That's basically what they did. And that, you know, small part, that is actually differential calculus as a representation, you know? According to Mathis Fund, differential calculus is about cutting into small pieces to find how it changes, you know? Like this, from like this shape, then like this, and then it became like this. So it changes, you know? Then for integral calculus, according to Mathis Fund, for him, uh, for integral calculus, it's about the summation of all these little bits, you know? So that is why it's called infinitesimal because 
they can reach up to very small, 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 tiny parts. That that very tiny, tiny parts. Okay. So yeah. Now, <clears throat> basically, calculus is about rate of change. Okay, it's about changes. All right. That's it. Okay. And this one I searched it in Google. Yeah. These these are the basically the definitions of calculus. All right. So what are the prerequisites that you need to learn in the calculus? Okay. So here in the prerequisites, you need to learn pre-calculus algebra, trigonometry, and ah, geometry and trigonometry. Okay? You need these two. Okay? In the Philippines curriculum, pre-calculus consists of connect section, trigo, uh, polar equation, sequence, and series. But you know, in others, pre-calculus is about algebra, geometry, trigo. So you need to learn all this because all of these are applied to uh, calculus. Okay. So the topics involved here are limits, differential calculus, and integral calculus. All right. So expect that we will learning these topics. And that will be all. So see you soon, guys.